with the completion of one of the most disruptive and dysfunctional Otter Creek Town Hall meetings ever, there's already murmurings that there's going to be a huge bombshell on Russ the Sus's side at next month's meeting. The question is, is this one going to blow up in his face too? While everyone is thinking about the final hearing between myself and Lynette, March 1st, this Friday, 2024 in Levy County, Bronson, what the hails is gonna happen? I'm still thinking about this Otter Creek Town Hall meeting that just erupted in front of everybody with Lynette and Crook breaking the civil protection order well within the 500 feet of George for well over an hour and a half and the deputies not arresting them. Now, I've got questions that all entail that and I'm sure you have some more questions as well. Dan Kay says, since you and George aren't supposed to be within 500 feet of then, I think he meant them, who was recording inside and right near the Jeep? Okay, Dan, let's clarify something very, very quick, okay? So Judge Craig DeThomas has illegally placed a temporary injunction on me. The illegal parts are taking away my freedom of speech, my First Amendment right. The illegal parts are my Second Amendment, my right to bear arms and protect myself and those that I love. Access to my property. Um, actually, I mean, his first order took away pieces of my property because that would have been within 500 feet because recall, John, Crook, and Lynette stalked me to Otter Creek intentionally, bought property literally across the street from me. The road is 12 foot wide, literally across the street from me. So that radius would be 500 feet minus the 12 feet of the road all the way into my property that I couldn't have access to. And he's also taken access away from my main road, stating that I can't drive on it. It's me, it's not George, it's me, the only one is me, he's placed it on me. So let's clarify that first, okay? So when you ask the question, if you and George aren't supposed to be within 500 feet, it's not George. George drives by their place every single day. George drives down the road every single day. George films whenever she wants to because she has a legal right to film for her own safety and protection and accountability. Now, who was recording inside and right near the Jeep? Dan, I don't know. If you go back and you look at that town hall meeting, everybody literally has a camera in their hand. When Tube Town was said by another YouTuber as a joke, and then they all have run with this, literally even Russ the Sus is filming with a camera in his hand. Instead of pledging his allegiance to his flag, to the country that he supposedly had served, he's more worried about recording. Tube Town, I didn't bring it. These individuals are literally the ones that are pushing Tube Town forward. Lori Simmons says the only reason Lynette's lawyer would have told her to go to that meeting, let's just stop right there. No good legal representation, no good legal counsel, no good lawyer is going to tell their client to go to the meeting knowing that they have civil protection orders against them. None. There is no valid reason. There is no invalid reason. There is just no reason. There are no exceptions for them to be there at all. There is no legal exception. They legally cannot be there. So Lynette is a liar. And I'm exercising my First Amendment right in stating that. And uh, even though she may say it's slander, I've got plenty of lies that I've caught her in. It's also the truth. So it, the hard part is actually even trying to believe that her lawyer would state such a thing. I can't fathom that any good legal representative, any good counsel, any, any lawyer is going to put their client in that position. But Lori Simmons goes on to say the only reason Lynette's lying, I guess it's lying eddies, that's what it is, it's lying eddies, lying eddies, okay. Lion Eddie's lawyer would have told her to go to the meeting and was hoping Jeremy would show up and break the order. Luckily, he's smarter than that. Of course, 99% of what comes out of her mouth is a lie, so who knows if, oh, I guess I just said that, who knows if her lawyer really told her that or not. So I can understand, I can understand where they're trying to play a chess game and say, well, if Lynette's there, which I can't understand why she would be there with a four-year-old trapped in a vehicle with Crook at 445 when she claims that Crook is a 
runk, that crook is a rug dealer, that crook is a buser. Um, on a vapor. And I, I, I can't fathom that. I can understand where their faulty thinking may be. Oh, if I'm here and Jeremy shows up, I can call the sheriff. Okay, well, you got an entire community that does not want her there. And so, um, yeah, we got a tip. We got a call. The residents all called us. Let us know she was there. So understand that um, the Otter Creek residents aren't for her. They truly are against her. And she should have never been there in the first place. Now, even to trap me, which I can, un I can understand where you could come up with that conclusion that it would be entrapment. It's trying to entrap Jeremy. If I show up, I just have to exercise the ability to immediately remove myself. So if I show up, see they're there, I either keep driving by, I turn around, and I leave immediately. Well, I already knew they were there because the residents of Otter Creek already filled us in. So I want you to understand that as well. We already knew they were there, but they can't be within 500 feet of George which is why we've already filed yet another contempt of court charge against them in the state of Ohio, where we are asking that they are mandated to appear in person. And if they don't, there will be a warrant for their arrest. And if they do, they can be arrested on the spot for what they've done. Nice 58 has a question and says, hey, if they walk out and they literally, they verbally said, we're not going to vote. Talking about Russ the Sus and Don the Con, which I'm sure you all remember. Russ the Sus has this leash on Don the Con. Come on, we're going. And then when Vice Mayor Zim says, please be quiet or leave. Sit down or leave. It was sit down or leave. And then Don the Con pouts. Ah! And I think he even stomps his foot. Russ takes his binder out that he's never had before and he removes himself as he removes the recorder of the meeting as well. So since they verbally said they're not going to vote and they left, isn't that pretty much saying they quit? They walked out, they should have avoided, they should be avoided out of their position. So there's no doubt they walked out, but I think you also have to understand just like if Joshua Silverman told Lynette and Crook to be there to try and entrap me as a chess move. Remember, this is, this is really a game of moves and maneuvering in chess. Well, Russ is trying to play chess as well. The issue is none of these individuals are that bright to be able to win. So they make a move and then that move gets taken over and then they throw up their arms and go, I quit, I'm leaving. So the aspect of them leaving, they were still there in attendance. While there wasn't a roll call, Madam Mayor was doing roll calls on purpose for the minutes because when they would do banking, when they would do third party contracts, they have to have the minutes and the minutes show who was actually there. So there was no roll call at this past meeting. And that's unfortunate, but at the same time, they did show up. So the minutes were approved, the agenda was approved, then multiple minutes were approved, and then they said, I'm leaving and I'm taking my ball, or recorder, or binder, or voting privilege. So this is where a lot of people have said, well, shouldn't they just hold back the check until the end of the meeting? You get paid if you actually show up and you stay. Well, the reality is they did show up and it's not illegal to leave a meeting. And so this is another maneuver to try and stop something from going forward that they don't want. Keep in mind, Russ the Sus ignorantly did not fill out forms, Form 6, or qualify for re-election. Nor has Lynette, although she attempted to, and she did errors on her forms, and she can face penalties up to $20,000 per penalty. And then she withdrew, she wrote and withdrew, and you go, how do you know? Because we public record requested all of that information. We have that for court. So the only people who were even qualified were there at that meeting, uh, and Lynette wasn't one of them. Russ and Don stomping out. I don't think you could actually take that as they're quitting. 
you would actually probably have to have some type of documentation. You, you can't go on a verbal, we're leaving. This is basically what I'm trying to say. Uh, lots of people leave lots of places doesn't mean they're leaving for good or that they're quitting for good. So you want something ironclad in writing uh, or they may not even show at the next meeting. There's potential they don't show at the next meeting. That would be the March meeting. April is the actual election, which those new members are seated in May. But the only members that will be seated will be either Laura Mott, Don the Khan, or Stuart Stewart. Now, George has already shared with me that she wants to vote for I'm not sharing that with the world, but I know I'm going to be voting for one of the three. We do have our voter registrations, so we are all set, ready to vote, along with many of the other residents. So that being said, it's going to be a hails of an election this year. Jack Baker says, Jeremy, you got to be at Town Hall extremely early next month. We usually go about half hour early. That way, when she shows up, the deputies will have no choice but to take them in. All right, Jack, I, I understand where you're headed with that. And understand that's also another, well, almost three weeks and one day away, okay? I'm not going to live my life three hours outside of town hall waiting to be first. First means absolutely nothing in this. Being there first means nothing. She has to leave. He has to leave, period. If we're there, whether we're there an hour early, whether we're there 30 minutes early, whether we are there late, whether we're on time, they have to leave. Now, I will agree with you that we will go early based off of our normal schedules of going early and we will contact Levy County Sheriff immediately if they are there and breaking the civil protection order. Now the goal would be that this isn't even gonna be an issue because you already have one contempt of court case still being ruled on in Ohio where maximum penalties are $1,000 fine and six months in jail per penalty. And we just filed yet another contempt of court case, which the judge is going to rule on as well. So at that point, they may be arrested and gone for all we know. Of course, the time of arrival should mean absolutely nothing if the Levy County deputies will actually do their job. They are state required and federally required to enforce all aspects of the civil protection order. They don't get to pick and choose. And that clearly states they may not be anywhere in any private or public. That means town hall. And the word is any. There is no exception. There is no, well, maybe if I get seated or if Russell Suss lies that I'm going to get seated on the town council. It doesn't matter. They sh could already be on the town council. They can't be there if we're there. There are no exceptions whatsoever. Deputies just have to do their job. Jack also says, let's assume they are ordered to appear in person in Ohio. So if they're ordered to appear in Ohio, do you really think that they'll bother to show? They will simply ignore the order as they have done with the rest of the court orders. Jack, I mean, you're right on it. No, we don't think that they will show whatsoever. They know if they show, they know if they go, that they automatically are in trouble, and they know if they don't go, they will automatically be in trouble. So pick your poison. You wanna pick, you want this one that's gonna get you, or you want this one that's gonna get you? And then they're gonna claim hardship. Oh, we can't travel, we can't, we are life-threatening. We all have life-threatening. John's leg is wrapped up to his crotch. I, I'm on disability. Oh, I got a four-year-old with life-threatening. I don't have a baby. Oh, my goodness, we've heard it all. We've literally heard it all and are exhausted with it and don't wanna ever hear any of it ever again and they're going to hear it again. The courts are gonna hear it. We're gonna to have to hear it. No, they're not gonna show. <laughs> there's, there's no way in hails they're gonna show up in person. But either which way, they still at the end of the day will somehow, some way, find themselves incriminated and there will be a warrant for arrest.
Mary says if those two guys were appointed seats, and she's talking about Carl and Joe. Keep in mind that Carl and Joe are the only individuals, two individuals that ran for two one-year seats on the town council. Five total seats. Two of them are only for one year to get everything back on schedule. And Mary says, if the two guys were appointed to the seats, why can't they just vote without those two? I don't understand this part. Well, Mary, here's what happened. Don the Con and Russ the Sus, which Don the Con was under Russ the Sus influence, which is ironic to say since Russ the Sus is a, um, the town runk who is always under the influence. But here we have Don the Con who is actually under the influence of Russ the Sus. Don the Khan, who has years previously been the arch nemesis of Russ the Sus, but now they've banded together. Once those two removed themselves, then the lawyer, Megan, I don't know what Megan's last name is. I just know her, the lawyer's name is Megan. That's all I know. Um, the lawyer, Megan, could have sworn both Carl and Joe in, but since they removed themselves, which was their tactical play, it was their chess maneuver, it was what they were going to do to disrupt, to be dysfunctional. Once they removed themselves, she said, all right, it's over. I can't swear them in because we no longer have a quorum. Now, many understand what quorum means and many don't understand what quorum means. Quorum means a majority. So there's five seats. If there's five people there, three votes for or against, that's a quorum, that's the majority. Let's say there's four people there. Well, then you would need three votes. Let's say there's three people there. Well, then you need two votes for a majority. Well, once Don the Khan and Russ the Sus exited, that left Vice Mayor Zim. It's one. And I know what you're thinking. You're going, but one of one is a quorum. No, there has to be more than one member. So that's why Megan said, Okay, we're done. I can't swear them in. We no longer have a quorum. So since there was no quorum, since the maneuver, which is so ironic because Russ the Sus the previous month was going on and on that, that Vice Mayor Zim had a family emergency and he wasn't there and that he, he did all this so there was no meeting. And yet here's Russ the Sus four weeks later doing it publicly removing himself from him and then ordering Don to remove himself as well. Why can't Don think for himself? As a matter of fact, why can't Don think for the residents, for the betterment of this community, instead of taking orders from Russ the Sus, who was his arch nemesis? This is where it's so ridiculous. It's so out of control. So what will happen next month then? Will the lawyer be able to actually swear them in? We don't know. We know that we hope that these individuals will be able to be sworn in. But in all reality, the one thing that we've learned about Otter Creek, the one thing we've learned about Levy County is every day something else will shock you. Lynn Palmer wants to bring in the big guns. She says, I don't know if you got my question, so I'm going to ask it again. And she says, can the United States Marshals be called in and to honor all these broken items for Ohio? This is absolutely ridiculous with these two. Well, thus far, we've heard from fans. Why don't you call the state police? I honestly don't know who the state police are unless they're talking about state troopers. And I don't know if state troopers have jurisdiction over the Levy County Sheriff. What I can share with you is that our legal team, and there are three lawyers that have represented us down here in Florida, and they've been absolutely phenomenal. Our legal team has never mentioned, hey, contact the state troopers. They have jurisdiction. So that hasn't been an option that's been brought up to us yet. Now. You're trumping state troopers, which is the only state police that I know of. Uh, and there could be others that I'm, I'm unfamiliar with. So I just don't know. I mean, that's the only thing I can come up with state police. But now you're saying, well, let's bring in the U.S. Marshals. Let's go federal. Again, I can say that our legal team has never brought this idea up to us. Although, boy, wouldn't it be amazing if we could just make one phone call and get the U.S. Marshals and say, listen, Florida is really messing this up. 
Florida, the state attorney from the state attorney's own office told the Levy County Sheriff not to enforce the civil protection order. Breaking state law, breaking federal law. Uh, U.S. Marshals, can you come on down and take care of this? Wouldn't that be amazing? I mean, you would think the very first thing they would do is they go straight to the state attorney who said not to enforce it, and then probably to the deputies who hadn't enforced it. I wish it were that easy, and maybe it is. Maybe there is. You know, there's often, when you're trying to find solutions, you go days, if not weeks, if not months, trying to find the right avenue, trying to find the right contact, trying to find the right person, trying to find the right solution. And so there may be one along those lines. The only solution that we currently know of is actually filing a lawsuit against the Levy County Sheriff and against the state attorney and against the state of Florida. Janet Sobeck pretty much sums this up perfectly. I mean, she really, really hits the nail on the head, okay? And she says this, I was totally appalled when Russ the Sus didn't put his hand over his heart and say the Pledge of Allegiance. He was too busy messing with his recorder and his phone. And he was supposedly in the service. Very much so appalling, I agree with you. He's a disgrace to the United States of America and to the military. Don's statement about the Bible needing rewritten, oh my. The sheriff did not arrest Lynette or John Crook for being there. When is this going to stop? This is ridiculous. My heart goes out to Jeremy and George. All the stress is not good for your health. You're in my prayers. God bless you both. Janet, when's it going to stop? Well, it's going to stop when the authorities actually make it stop. The question is, who? What authority? So you currently have the court system in Ohio involved. You have the court system in Florida involved. You have the Levy County deputies. And so thus far, Ohio has stated, yes, they absolutely are a threat to both my life and George's life. And so both of us are covered under the protection order. Now, we attempted to get all employees covered as well. And our lawyer, as we went into it, told us they would be covered as third parties. Unfortunately, it was not granted that way. So the only parties that are actually covered are myself and George. So we both are covered 500 feet. Wherever we are at, they must be 500 feet away. I'm looking at the road right now. I'm actually looking at every vehicle that goes by because that's what George and I have to do now. We literally have to make sure friend or foe, friend or foe, friend or foe. What are they gonna do to us next? What are they gonna do next? That's how crazy it is. And no, they can't, well, you know what, they can. They can drive on the road. They can't come on the property, okay? They obviously are near our property anyway because they live right across the street from the property and have access to the road. So you've got the Ohio State already stating, yep, they are an endangerment based on all the information, the truth that was shared with them, Everything from the signs, from the postings, from the videos, from the recordings, it was all shared in Ohio court. And then you have Levy County Sheriff who are supposed to act upon it and enforce it from day one of returning to Florida in the Levy County Sheriff parking lot. We're stalked. Not only are we stalked, then they go and pull straight up to our vehicle and our trailer. Major, major issue, major issue. And what does Levy County Sheriff do about it? Eh, eh, as if they can't be annoyed with it. Now, don't get me wrong, I understand there's bigger things. There's bigger things than what I think is the biggest thing in my life right now, right? So to what's important to me, them enforcing these civil protection orders, isn't necessarily what's important to the Levy County Sheriff Department. I mean, they may have murders to investigate. They may have, uh, child offenders to investigate. And I'm sure they do. There's no doubt about it. They do. There's, there's, there's much what they would consider bigger crimes, and frankly, what I would consider bigger crimes than breaking a civil protection order. You would think that individuals would not... <laughs> you would think that individuals, meaning Lynette and John Crook, would be civil and not break the orders that they have been legally mandated not to break. 
And you would think that Levy County deputies would actually enforce it and arrest them immediately. If I would have shown up to the town hall meeting and if I would have stayed, you can guarantee 100% that based on the temporary injunction that Judge DeThomas has placed on me, with no evidence on anything that I've done wrong, based off of evidence, uh, we can't even call it evidence. There's nothing, been, there's nothing been actually submitted as evidence by Lynette yet. So everything has been thrown out as hearsay. Allegations, allegations stating that people who watch my videos contact her and threaten her. And allegations that my lawyer tried to bribe her and pay her off. Um, that's nothing of what I have done. It's completely opposite. It's what others have done. And, and a judge trying to give me consequences for what others have done. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. And yet this judge somehow thinks that he can hold me accountable for what other people have done. Uh, allegedly, there is no proof. There literally is no proof. There is no evidence of any of this, which blows my mind, which yet again puts us in the Florida court system. When does it stop? It probably stops one of two ways. It stops when Judge DeThomas stops and goes, oh my goodness, these two are toxic. And he says, I'm going to actually give an injunction to Jeremy and George, which we filed for injunctions already. We filed for injunctions against them based on the law, good faith and credit, based on our civil protection orders from Ohio, in good faith and credit, that's a legal term, that the judge, Judge DeThomas, should have automatically given us an injunction in Florida. And you know what he did? He denied it. And then he sealed it. And then we had to pay money to get it unsealed, to get all the information. That's a little insane, don't you think? So I think the way that it stops is Judge Thomas stops doing what he's doing and actually goes, oh man, these two are toxic and they're in danger to Jeremy and George. And then he slaps the injunction on them. I think once there's a Florida injunction, I think the deputies will actually act. I think they will go immediate, you're arrested, done. But until then, they want to look and snub their nose up at Ohio. It's the bigotry. It literally is the bigotry. Coming down here, being from up north, bigotry. Oh, oh, you all know what they call us, Yankees. I'm not even from New York. I'm from Ohio. Corn fed, born and raised on the playground is where I spent most of my days. Maxing, relaxing, keeping it all cool till a couple of fools up to no good started making trouble in my neighborhood. Casey Tanner says, okay, so Don the Con, Russ the Sus, they walk out, which we've talked about already. They got up at the start of the meeting. They walk out before anything happened. Does the city still have to pay them the $100? I wouldn't. And does that count towards if you miss two or more meetings and then you're out? So Casey, I'm sure they were paid, okay? Let's focus on the right thing to do, even if the wrong people did the wrong thing. So the right thing to do is they did show up I don't know if you can justify not paying them if they walk out, but you do make another good point. You say, well, I wouldn't pay them. Remember, you got to do things the right way, the legal way. Okay. And does it count towards if they miss two or, meeting, two or more meetings and then you're out? So one of the things that is a problem for Otter Creek, and you heard it in the last meeting, is the charter is old and out of date. And many of the things in the charter are illegal. So, for example, the charter states if you miss so many meetings, then you can, be, you can be kicked off of the council. Well, state law says the only way to be removed, the only way to remove a government figure is for the governor to do it. Now, how do we know that? Because in the past, before we were all recording these meetings, Russ the Sus tried to have Vice Mayor Zim removed from the council when he sat as a council member. So the things that you're seeing in Otter Creek, and I, I need to emphasize this, the things that you're witnessing and seeing in Otter Creek, nothing has changed because YouTubers showed up. Nothing at all has changed. The only difference is now it's all being recorded on camera and putting on a social media platform. That's it. That's the only thing that changed. The, all the dysfunction has always been there. All the fighting always been there has nothing to do with the catalyst of a youtuber showing up at all okay 
And so will it count? So Charter says three and you're out. They can't. They already tried it. Russ the Sus tried it. Remember, Russ the Sus has tried quite a few things when he hasn't gotten his way. He tried to unincorporate the town when the town didn't vote for him and they wanted him out, right? And then he tried to get petitions and signatures and couldn't even get that right. He's tried to have Vice Mayor Zim removed formerly when Russ the Sus was mayor and Vice Mayor Zim was just a council member sitting at the, at the table. That didn't work. That's where he found out, oh, okay, the governor's the only one that can remove because Russ the Sus thought he was the man with all the power that could do these things. That doesn't mean that Megan, the lawyer, can't say, hey, all right, walked out of a meeting. What's going to happen next month? I'm guessing, and it's just a guess, they're going to be extremely disruptive, dis extremely dysfunctional, and I believe they're going to do attempt to walk out of a meeting again if they even show. It may be next month they don't even show. They may not show going, all right, well, you can't do anything. Nothing can be done if we don't even show up. Oh, I can guarantee you Lynette and Crook will be there. Three, maybe four, maybe even a whole day earlier just waiting, just waiting outside in a vehicle with a, with a child, just trying to keep us away, which the deputies after the meeting were over. That's is after an hour and a half of them breaking the civil protection order, told them they legally must leave. Well, it was all said and done by then, right? So the lawyer could make contacts with the governor's office and see if something could happen if they continue to act this way. But for us to forecast and try and figure out if that's gonna happen, we just don't know yet. Wenmar says, Hey, um, I see a little problem with addresses. Um, Lynette and I think even Meek's actual residencies are listed in Bronson. It only shows they have P.O. boxes in Otter Creek. How can Meeks be on council if he doesn't have his residency in Otter Creek? All right, Wenmars. Well, we've kind of tackled this before in the past, but we'll tackle it again. Remember, we live in a town just over, a smidgen over one square mile. There are roughly 100 residents here, give or take, on any given day. Maybe and more. According to Gale, 46 houses, no more than 50. I think Gail did say 46 houses. I think last year there were 71 registered voters. Yeah, the numbers go up and down based off of based off of whether people want to stick around or not. Um, or if they come in, a lot of snowbirders. You got George and I as snowbirders. You know, you've got Deanna here permanently now, so that's full time. That's another one up. So understand, it's a tiny, tiny town, less than one square mile, and within the town. I'm going to guess, if, if not close to, George and I probably own more acreage in the town than anybody else. There are those that we know own a lot of acreage, but it's out of town. It, it goes past the, the border or the boundary lines. So that being said, our addresses as well are in Bronson. It's the way Levy County system works with taxes and with auditor site they just say that otter creek is bronson because otter creek is too small i guess for their system just to be otter creek is what it appears to be so even our physical our physical address like right here where i'm at the schoolhouse we've shared that physical address before it's definitely otter creek but legal sites are going to show it as bronson so russ the sus he lives in Otter Creek. Yeah, he just lives straight down over there. He's right across the street. He's one of my horrible neighbors. So I've got an, I've got an incredible neighbor right there. I've got an incredible neighbor right there. We've yet to meet our neighbor right there. We have an incredible neighbor right there that's a fan and, um, and has messaged us and said, hey, I'm a big fan. I love what you're doing. I love that you're cleaning up the property. So haven't met the neighbor. Great neighbor, great neighbor, great neighbor. Rust the sus, horrific neighbor. So you understand vast majority of people are great neighbors here. They all are residents regardless of their physical addresses being out of Bronson for legal sites and legal reasons. We all have P.O. boxes. We actually have to have P.O. boxes, which is kind of funny because the FedEx guy, while we were filming, 
the FedEx guy actually called me. He's like, hey, I'm outside of your property right now. I don't know where to put your package. I was like, well, definitely not at the property. I was like, we have a PO box. And I said, but where are you? He says, I'm at your, your, your house, which you can't get to the house. It's way, way, way back in the woods. There's a lock, gate, fence, everything. And I said, well, I'm over at the schoolhouse. You know where that's at? I'm just around the corner. And uh, <laughs> he's like, no. I was like, all right, we'll just turn around and go around the corner. And he brought us the package. Now, I did look up what it was. And uh, it was George. George actually bought some poly mailers for, for sales. So they came through FedEx, which is interesting. But even a FedEx driver can't actually deliver to us because they don't deliver to P.O. boxes. And you can't deliver to our house address over there. It just so happened, I don't know how he got, he must have got a number for George's. It might be on the label. Well, and I was thinking about label. that too. I'm like, how did a FedEx guy get my number? And then I looked in eBay and, and it, it is actually what George purchased. So my number is probably connected with all of that. So it's kind of funky and wonky in this area, but as you've seen, what isn't? Spicy Kiwi says, hey, how about you swear in those two nominees, uh, Carl and Joe, right before the actual meeting starts? The, can, literally what Spicy Kiwi says, just a thought, could the electoral officer swear in the two unopposed members to the council before the next meeting starts? Okay. And Spicy Kiwi, I hope you understand the reason why it can't be before the meeting starts is the same reason why it couldn't be when Don and Russ left. You have to be in an official meeting. The meeting has to start to swear them in. And if the meeting starts and they attempt to do the swear in first, Russ the Sus and Don the Con, they'll be out the door. Will Jenkins says, hey, she's got a 501c3. Doesn't that mean she can't be involved in politics? He says it like this. Also, doesn't have a 501c3 make it so she can't do anything in politics? And if she wants to continue to say she doesn't have that, why is it plastered on everything they have about the, in quotes, rescue? All right, 501c3 does not mean you cannot be involved in politics or run in politics. It means you cannot be for somebody or against somebody. It means you can't post signs all over town saying, stop the corruption, vote out Russ, Russell Meek Sr., Stuart Stewart, and Attorney Warm, as they did. And they posted it in public posting areas, which they should have never had any access to. It's not for private residents to place anything in. And they did it on an eight by four, four by eight sheet of plywood in their front yard up on post. So that's the illegal thing they did. As a 501c3 uh, officer, which in theory, they are both officers. The rescue has in theory, three officers, okay? They can run for politics. They can run for government. They just can't be for or against anyone. Judgment Day says, this is the best clown show they have ever seen. Otter Creek Town Hall says this, uh, you have clowns everywhere with all the cameras there now. Why would anyone want to be a part of this circus of corruption? Till they clear the ring, it's just going to be the same clown show over and over again. What a waste of taxpayer money. By the way, that's really scary that you know who changed her hair color to match you, George. There's a comment just for you. Oh, which by the way, then she posts trying to communicate with us that she didn't do it. And then when we call her out on it, an hour after she watches the video, she tries to pretend like she was trying to prove it to somebody else, not us. Uh, pretty ridiculous, wouldn't you say? And then she's beyond obsessed with you, Jeremy. Yeah, you can say that again. It's probably my two-inch pipe. Please, George, be careful. An obsessed woman that mimics you is very scary and a dangerous one praying for you guys. So the real question, Judgment Day, is who would want to be a part of this circus show? Uh, I don't get it either. I mean, it went from one camera, which was not ours. Wasn't even ours. It was John Crook and Lynette who illegally, being officers of a 501c3, started Otter Creek politics groups and being all against Russ the Sus. 
all against Mary. Lynette posts she wanted to fire Mary, okay? All of this garbage that they began to start posting. They made Facebook groups for it, all illegal of what they were doing with a 501c3. They started filming it. But if we go back even further, 10, 11 years now, it was actually Russ the Suss's daughter, Charlene, that was having the meetings filmed. Then it affects us personally because it's our life that we film on a daily basis. What affects our life, what comes into our life, what's happening in our life, it affects us on a personal level. So we start to film. Well, that's where the exposure happens, right? And who in their right mind would want to be on film behaving like a toddler? It is literally geriatric babysitting. And it's beyond a circus. It's appalling. It's out of control. And now there's two cameras, and then three cameras, and four cameras, and five cameras, and six cameras, and seven cameras, and people trying to fight to be the first one to release what's happening in Otter Creek. You know what would be nice? Nothing's released. They should just unincorporate, and then there's nothing to ever film, nothing to ever show, nothing for anybody to fight about. That would be the best thing for this tiny town. Lavender Blue says, the passenger door on the car, if you look at the Otter Creek video, you can plainly and clearly see the kid. Clear as day. So for someone who's claiming that she's so protective of this kid, why did she bring her child to a situation where she knew there was going to be multiple people filming from all angles? And on another note, since they're all copying everything you say and do, Jeremy, I could have so much fun with this. I did it to a coworker years ago. I think, George, maybe you should dye your hair hot pink and see what follows. Maybe you should do a blast of the 80s. You should go with all, um, what was those, wind jackets? Remember the wind suits? Maybe we could get matching windsuits. Go to the meetings in matching windsuits from the 80s and we'll dye our hair. I'll do a spike. I'll get frosted tips and I'll spike it. And you can you can go with hot pink. I mean, this Where is... Where would she get the money, though, to buy the, the suit? Oh, wait. She would take money from oh, the she would turtle take, pellets. Yeah, she would take money. Yeah. So she instead of buying pellets for the me. turtles and tortoises, she bought... She'd put a GoFundMe up. Makeup and hair dye. Yeah, yeah. so where's all this money? Because that's more important. Because we've seen post after post after post can't even afford to feed themselves. And she's wearing new shoes turtles. every time she shows up to court. This is interesting. This is very interesting. But apparently um, the couple that robbed her robbed her of all of her personal everything. belongings. Everything. Everything, according to her posts. Mm -hmm. So... And again, we've reposted and we've shared some of those posts as it is already. But um, the fact still remains that we could have some fun with it. But as Lavender Blue has clearly stated, why does she bring the child to a situation where there no, she knows there's going to be multiple people filming at multiple angles? So she's running to a court stating, oh no, they're filming my child. Then places the child right by the door to block the, the way. Front and center. Literally front and center. Then nobody has a mask on, including her, who she claims she has to, no matter what. No matter what. Life-threatening. And you've got her abuser vaping in the vehicle, which could kill her. Anything could kill her. And we have deputies everywhere. Um, this is a volatile situation for a child to be placed in and the only people who placed this child in this situation wasn't her lawyer regardless if her lawyer truly ever did say yeah go to the meeting wasn't the state attorney or the attorney general i can assure you that as well because no attorney general is going to give legal advice to Lynette or crook and say oh yeah go to the meeting but she states they gave him permission they can't give permission Ohio has taken every right away. If we are there, they must be 500 feet away. So instead of protecting a child, they continue to put the child in the most volatile situation. Maine Magic says, if OC, the Otter Creek, is responsible for actually enforcing the protection orders, Okay, so let's back up a little bit. I have shared that Otter Creek is responsible. Just like our town up north, our police the entire department up there have copies of the protection order. They must have them on file in our town. And so, well, it's a village up there. 
the town here must have it on file as well. They are, the town is responsible for enforcing the protection orders, as is the county, as is the state. And so, um, da, 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 da. and the attorney representing the interest of Otter Creek, should you or your attorney make her aware that a sworn officer of the Florida court shall have to indict or indicate that John Crook and Lynette will have to leave if George is in attendance at the meeting. Well, here's the issue. So Otter Creek is responsible, right? But who do they have? Who's on salary? Well, they have Belinda on salary and she has her responsibilities, which do not include enforcing civil protection orders. You have Richard on salary and he's maintenance and he has his responsibilities, which does not include enforcing civil protection orders. Do you understand that Otter Creek is also, they're responsible for code enforcement, that all this garbage in this town shouldn't be there, mainly Russes, Dons, and frankly. All the animals that aren't on leashes. I don't care how these individuals live until it impacts how I live. You understand when you live in an area, one way one person lives, for example, encroaching on my property, turning it into a dump, selling drugs on my property, that, in, that affects the way I live. It's not okay. Another person, you already know who it is, pulling out firearms on me, right? Posting garbage everywhere. I don't care how individuals live if it doesn't affect me. When it affects me, then there's an issue. So anybody who wants to live the way they want to live, that's fine. Go ahead and do it. And if you want to trash up your entire property, you probably shouldn't live within city limits where there are ordinances and there are laws and resolutions. But Otter Creek is responsible for code enforcement. Who's gonna do it? There is nobody on salary that's a code enforcement officer. There is no police station. There is no police in Otter Creek. There is no court in Otter Creek. It's funny because as we show court and we show the sheriff deputies and all this, many people will go on to leave comments and say, well, I can't believe that in Otter Creek. Listen, Otter Creek has nothing. We came to Otter Creek because it was the central hub to getting to all the major cities within two hours and we're next to the Gulf Coast. And we didn't want to be around anything. We wanted to be in the woods to hide and to live peacefully. And the exact opposite has happened. So while Otter Creek is responsible, they don't have anybody here that can actually take on the task. Rip wants to know what's behind the Ohio orders. And Rip goes on to ask, was there any alleged stalking or harassment which occurred in Ohio? So Rip, number one, what you need to understand is residency is in Ohio. Therefore, Ohio has jurisdiction over our civil protection orders. Doesn't matter if anything happened in Ohio or not. Ohio is my permanent residency. Therefore, Ohio has jurisdiction over those orders and my life. Okay. Number two, cyber stalking does not take place just in Florida or Ohio. It takes place online. And while they did horrific things here in Florida in person, they also posted horrific things online, cyber stalking. So it doesn't matter what's behind it or where it's from. It can happen at any place to anyone at any time.